In this video, Gosha is going to spill the beans on what you want to know when investing in Myrtle Beach oceanfront condos. We're talking operating costs, gross rental income, profits. We're going to talk about occupancy and how she doesn't track it. I do not track it. <laughs> Can you believe it? We're going to talk about all the secrets and the drivers mm -hmm. that she uses to run her business. Yes, mm -hmm. she owns over 15 Myrtle Beach oceanfront condos and she is a commercial real estate investor. You don't want to miss it. Let's get into the video now. Now, walk us through. So basically, the upside is in oceanfront condos. There's more potential for earning in an oceanfront condo than there is in a property a block from the beach. Absolutely. Not just HOA fees. Um, being able to rent it in an off-season, that's a big factor too, because I believe that just about anything can be rented during summer. We're so busy with oh, yeah so many tourists coming here we have so many great attractions in our area so we're very busy during summer during winter people will want to have that view yeah they want to stay on the ocean so while my townhouse stayed full during the summer it was harder to rent it during winter that's right um my oceanfront properties they stay booked year round 12 mm -hmm. months out the year and mm -hmm. you're hearing it right here from gosha guys mm -hmm. 12 months out of the year. Now, I had a client call me, or, you know, he's like, I'm looking to buy between Florida and your market, but in Florida, I can, you know, I can rent 12 months out of the year. You can rent 12 months out of the year here. We have the same tourism. Yes, you know, it's the, same, it's the same market. Mm -hmm. Now, she's telling you, plain and simple, that the difference between short term rentals that are not oceanfront is they're much more difficult to rent in the winter months. But oceanfront condos that, again, are oceanfront that have a plethora of on-site amenities are easier to rent in those winter months. She's helping you avoid so many costly and timely learning curves. You'll just follow the advice. She's been down the path. She's been down the road. She knows what she's talking about. Now, moving right along, I do want to ask you, so basically, what drew you to investing in the first place in real estate as opposed to maybe stocks or bonds you know you know any other type of investment i think stocks and bonds are too much risk for me i'm more risk averse okay um real estate especially when i started investing in 2009 okay oh, that wow. was yes at the very very best time to actually get into it it was so low <laughs> you wouldn't believe the prices that I was paying for certain properties, oh, even man. here in Myrtle Beach. Like we, we don't want the investors that are stepping into the market right now to hear what prices I was paying no back doubt. then. So we're gonna was, yeah, we're gonna leave that out. That was post. <laughs> that was right after everything collapsed in two thousand eight. Yes, yes. Started you were buying the first stuff for property. pennies on the dollar. Oh my goodness! Yes, they tripled um, in value by now. Um, yeah. Great investments. Yeah. I'm very happy that I got in at the right time. Um, so that's what got me in. I've seen opportunity. We were actually restaurant owners in Colorado okay. back then. Um, owning restaurant is very hard business. No doubt. You work when you're there. You work when you're not there. It just seemed like we were looking for um, first passive investments somewhere to as we were making money um, in a restaurant. We were yeah. trying to invest our money to have, you know, money work for us and yes. not just us instead of you working, working for working, the working. money mm -hmm. yeah. so we started investing and that's why it also started with long-term rental because it appeared like it would be less work okay but that's why we got into real estate in general just trying to invest um in something that seemed like it's a little or low risk that's if right that makes sense yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so the risk level mm -hmm. for you was perfect Oh, yes. You don't want yeah. to do the stock market that's up mm -hmm. like crazy and drops like crazy. You mm -hmm. want something that's that's as steady as possible, but also can give you that high right. yield. Mm -hmm. Real estate, particularly the short term rental market when it comes to Myrtle Beach Oceanfront condos, it, it has the upside potential that you're looking for. Maybe not as great as the stock market. At the same token, it's not going to have all those drops. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be dropping value every other week, you know, and your your nerves are wrecked because you've got thousands of dollars invested. It's not for everybody. It's not, yeah, exactly. not for everybody. It just wasn't for me. Let's get in unit one, two, three, four, twelve, thirty-four. Our right, guys, as soon as we walk in, you're gonna notice two full size beds, nautical themed all throughout the unit. You want as many beds as possible in your unit because it's going to help sleep as many people as possible, which is gonna drive up your gross rental income. Now you have a closet immediately to the left, as you can see here. You will notice LVP flooring and tile. Now in the kitchen area, nice backsplash. 
a coffee maker, great little coffee stuff, all kinds of nice decor in here. You will see nice cabinets, granite countertops, microwave stove, sink, and a refrigerator full size. Then we do have the vanity, as you can see here, and the restroom to our right. As you can see, there is a tub shower combo. Very, very nice. All right, guys, your living area space. Nice, beautiful LVP flooring, chairs, tables, beautiful decor throughout, flat screen TV. I do want to point out that immediately to our right is a Murphy bed. Again, sleeping more people is going to help you make more money. This is the balcony. We've got a nice little suite set up here, as you can see. Plenty of room there. And this is your moneymaker. This is what you are looking for, guys. Sand and ocean right in front of you. An ocean front view. You can see those amenities down below. But, but as far as you can see, you want to see sand and ocean. All right, so let's work through a financing scenario right here at the Landmark Resort. Guys, that purchase price was $155,000. Your down payment at 15% was $23,250. Guys, I have a lender that does do a down payment of only 15% on Myrtle Beach Oceanfront condos. Yes, his name is Jason King. Get in contact with me, 843-360-1737. Most of the time, your lenders are going to tell you 25% down. So get in contact with me. It's a huge cash savings. Keeps cash in your pocket. All right, so your, your 2023 gross rental income was $39,172.62. Um, and then your Airbnb platform fee, if you just rent this unit on Airbnb, is $1,175.18. If you subtract that $1,175.18 from your $39,172.62 gross rental income, you are left with a subtotal of $37,997.00. Forty-four cents. Now, your principal and interest for this loan was eleven thousand nine hundred four. Um, if I recall correctly, it's nine hundred ninety-two dollars a month. It's at, that's at a seven point nine percent interest rate over thirty years. Keep in mind, you do have to have a lender that does finance condo tells. In the finance world, oceanfront condos are called condo tells. A lot of the times, they are they are hotels that have been converted to condominiums. Um, your interest rate is typically higher than conventional because it is an investment and it is a little bit more risky. Now, your taxes were $2,622.72. Your cleaning services were $120 for, uh, were estimated at $120 per cleaning for a hundred, excuse me, for 30 cleanings. That gives you a total of $3,600. Your HO6 insurance was $1,000. We have you estimated it might be a little bit less, might be a little bit more. Um, your HO6 insurance covers the, it covers the interior part of the condo, that's stud to stud. The exterior building insurance is done through the HOA, that's paid in your HOA payment. So between both insurances, you are covered from hurricanes and things like that, guys. So the insurance is what keeps you safe when you have tropical storms and hurricanes that come in our market. Now, your excise tax was $367.00. That's $145 for the first $2,000 that you make in gross rental income and $6 per $1,000 that you make in gross rental income after that. That's a, that is a fee that you pay for your business license to own and operate a, a, uh, a short-term vacation rental property in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Now, your local hospitality and accommodations tax, that was $1,175.18. That's a total of 3%. 1.5% goes to the city of Myrtle Beach. 1.5% goes to Horry County. Now, additionally, there is a 10% a South Carolina state tax that's paid through the Airbnb platform to, uh, you know, that, that passes through from the guest in the Airbnb transaction. So that's a pass through tax that you don't have to worry about coming out of pocket with. Now, I will tell you that not all platforms collect all the taxes that you have to pay. And so you, you, you need to make sure that you check into the particular platform, whether it's Airbnb, VRBO, or bookings.com, and make sure that you are abiding by all those tax regulations. Now, moving right along, your HOA, your annualized HOA dues were a total of $10,272, now bringing you to a subtotal of $30,940.90 for your operating costs. 
Now, if you subtract that $30,940.90 from the subtotal up top of $37,997.44, you are left with a projected profitability of as much as $7,056.54. And if your unit would have just made $5,000 more at $44,000 worth of gross rental income, you'd have cleared as much as $12,056.54 for financing in oceanfront condo. You're borrowing and using the lender, the bank's money, guys, and you're still able to pull twelve dollars do not tell me that oceanfront condos aren't profitable. Now, depreciation is one of the most powerful tools in our belt when it comes to owning real estate. Guys, you have to take advantage of depreciation. Now, with $155,000 purchase price and being able to uh, depreciate short-term rentals over 39 years, that brings you to a taxable income deduction of as much as $3,974.36 per year. Additionally, guys, you can perform what's called a cost segregation study. You do have to find a CPA that specializes in doing cost segregation However, you could be riding as off as much as $30,000 in just your first or second year owning this oceanfront condo. So definitely want to check in with your CPA, especially you high income earners, on advanced tax strategies. So let's work through appreciation. Now, if you'd have bought a one bedroom oceanfront condo in 2014 right here at the Landmark, you'd have paid only $81,812 for it. Now, you fast forward to 2014 and guys, excuse me, you fast forward to 2024 and you're paying as much on average as $159,945. Now, yes, the purchase price on this particular unit, we did get him, I think it came in maybe at 143 or 145. So we did buy it well under the average price, which is what you want when you're working with a real estate broker. You need to find somebody that's going to get a deal for you. Give me a call, 843- 360-1737. Now guys, moving right along, that appreciation from $159,945 to the original purchase price of $81,812, that's $78,133 that you would have made in appreciation if you bought and sold this oceanfront condo at these average prices. Click the screen now to watch the next video with Gosha.